Strip Nude for Your Killer is a 1975 giallo, a murder mystery. It's Italian. And this is currently on Tubi, finally. It was only on YouTube for a while. Now it's on Tubi, so if you want to check it out for free, go check it out on Tubi. I recommend Tubi to anyone, especially if you're a horror fan, because they got all kinds of hidden gems there. So this was requested from my patron, Jeanette. And shout out to Mikey, because I know he's been requesting this movie, or that I just at least watch it, for quite some time. Well, now I finally have seen it, and here are my thoughts, Mikey. And you too, Jeanette. So, did I like Strip Nude for Your Killer? A little. I liked it some. It wasn't that bad. It could have been better, but it wasn't terrible. Getting into what I like about this movie, I really like how sleazy this movie is. It is New York Ripper level of sleaze. It's, it's chock full of tits and ass. There is lots of nudity in this film. I mean, it's called strip nude for your killer. No one's really stripping nude for the killer. They're just stripping nude on their own and then they get killed. <laughs> but there is tons of tits and ass in this movie. Lots of, like, it kind of slows down the movie. That's how much there is. Like, okay, I get it. Like, can I fast... Like, it gets to a point where you kind of want to fast forward through it. Kind of like Island of Death. Oh, man. There's a lot. There's also some pretty funny, bad dialogue in this movie. That was pretty amusing. Uh, you know, just the one character, Maurizio, the overweight character. He's the best character in the movie. He's like the comic relief. His like sex scene, his premature ejaculation, like that scene was hysterical. Also, the ending of this movie is pretty funny. Usually, these movies end as soon as the killer's dead, but it goes on an extra minute to show the surviving couple and what they say and do at the very end was just not ex what I was expecting. It's so funny and just out of left field. I also kind of dig the killer's look. It's been done a few times after this, but I think this is one of the first times where we see a killer dressed up as a motorcyclist. He's He or she is wearing all black leather and a motorcycle helmet. It's very much like Night School and Nightmare Beach, but this is way before that. This predates those movies. And also, kind of similar to Night School is the fact that this killer has this water gimmick. Like, the this killer has running water, like bathtubs or sinks, before each kill for a specific reason. And in Night School, the killer was decapitating people and putting their heads in water after each kill. So it's kind of... A little similar in a way. And because I'm a huge slasher fan, I liked some of the POV shots, the stalking, and this killer has some really heavy breathing, like this person's Michael Myers or some shit. And lastly, there was one really good suspense sequence. It started to go on a little too long, but then that's when the scare happened. I was like starting to get to that point where I was like, all right, get on with it. Boom, that's when the scare happened. So there was one good suspense sequence in the film towards the end. Getting into what I don't like about this movie, uh, the kills suck. Uh, <laughs> the kills are all the same, and it's not gory at all. It's got the typical bright red 70s blood, and everyone's just kind of getting stabbed in their armpits. What is this, like Halloween kills again? Like I, I've been seeing a lot of Halloween kills, armpit stabbings lately. I don't like it. Uh, but yeah, like every kill is the same way. Just, they get stabbed, like, near the arms, and then they just drop dead very quickly. There's no, like, actual effects being done. There's no, like, wound that you see. You know, nothing like that. It's just, like, they splash blood on them, and we just kind of see the aftermath. Like, there's nothing cool here kills-wise. There's no gore. You know, at least in the other Giallo I reviewed recently, uh, Red Queen something kills seven times. There was standout kills in that movie that are memorable. In this one, there's not a single kill in this movie that I will remember. I also didn't like the editing choices here. They, for some reason, keep throwing in like five to ten frames of the opening death during like each 
kill scene and kind of just like threw out like just a quick shot of something. It wasn't necessary. I didn't like it. And also, this movie's cinematography wasn't that good. It's really dark at times. And some of the camera work just felt a bit poor. Uh, this is from the director of Maniac Killer and Burial Ground, by the way. Uh, both movies I've seen and do not recommend. So, um, but yeah, the cinematography, there was a lot of night scenes where it was just too dark. And they needed some more lights on set. And the music was not a big fan of the score of this film. Like, there was moments where I was kind of getting into it. But for the most part, it was just not working for me. The score, the soundtrack is mainly like 70s disco sounding, upbeat, jazzy shit. Like, wasn't into it. wasn't working for the scenes. It should have been more intense, more horror-like. Or just more catchy, like the Red Queen movie. I also didn't like the main character in this movie. We're supposed to give a shit about this guy, Carlo. Like, he's our, he's our lead. You gotta have a good lead in these kinds of movies for me to get on board and give a shit about this person surviving and solving the case. Like, a fucking airplane could fall from the skies and land on this asshole's head, and I wouldn't care. I'd be like, good, he deserved it. Like, this guy's a deplorable person. He's a womanizer. He's constantly threatening to beat the shit out of his new girlfriend, and for some reason she just puts up with this shit. He's threatening to beat the shit out of his own boss and she doesn't fire his ass. Could you imagine if you went up to your boss and you're like... Oh. I swear, like, you say one more word, and, like, they're gonna fire you. That's how things work in the real world. So, <laughs> this guy's threatening everybody. He's a piece of shit. And this is the main guy? Like, I didn't like him at all. So, final thoughts. This is a decent whodunit giallo that's really just good for a couple of laughs and for seeing a bunch of naked girls. But don't expect it to be too serious and too brutal when it comes to like the kills or anything there's nothing here that stands out it's not really that scary there's one good suspense sequence but overall it's just kind of a forgettable formulaic giallo nothing here surprising just lots of tits and a couple of goofy moments so when it comes to strip nude for your killer I'll give this one three out of five stars spoiler discussion so the movie opens up with this abortion gone wrong. The lady gets a cardiac gets cardiac arrest, dies, and the doc calls somebody. We don't know who he's calling, but we find out later on it's Carlo, the main guy. Um, so Carlo and this doc, they hide the woman's body back at her apartment to make it look like she just died on her own of natural causes at her apartment. And so that's what triggers our killer into wanting to get revenge. And so... Then it just shows the doc getting killed right outside of his home <laughs> rather quickly. Like, the revenge starts pretty quickly. And so, yeah, he just gets stabbed right outside of his house. And then we meet our main douchebag, Carlo, with the shortest shorts. Like, if they're shorts, are they shorts? They're underwear, right? It's, like, the shortest underwear on a man I've ever seen. Like, his ass cheeks were hanging out of these things. And he's following this new girl and just taking like a thousand pictures of her, harassing her. Like she has a lot of patience for this guy. Like, and he's like taking a hundred pictures of her back and her ass and complimenting her face even though he can't see it. And so then he takes her to the sauna and starts fucking her <laughs> right away. She just strips nude for him and then he gets nude. Not only do you get to see lots of tits in this film, but... If you look closely, you can see his dick and balls in a few scenes. Like, they don't hide it at all. Like, his balls are just out there. Like, there's one moment where this guy is on a bed, naked, doing a handstand. And he says he's doing it to, like, I gotta get the blood flow to my head for some reason. And there's his dick and balls right there for you to see. Like, there's lots of nudity. But yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, he's just taking this girl to the sauna, having sex, and then they go to this strip club, uh, this fat guy, Mauricio, and who ends up being the killer, Patricia, and we just see these strippers naked, making out. 
I mean, the movie just slows down just to show this stuff. Like, it's not important to see, but they just let it linger. It's just, all right, just keep showing it. Like, I get it. Come on, let's get to the story here. <laughs> and so this girl, Patricia, she's the killer. And I predicted it right away. But here's what's funny. Even though I predicted that this chick was going to be the killer, somehow I didn't realize that Doris wasn't Patricia. I thought Doris and Patricia were the same person. I wasn't paying attention to names at the moment. I started to write names down later on, but I thought that was the same character. So when Doris dies later on, I was like, oh, I guess she can't be the killer. But then when the reveal happened, it was like, it's Patricia, that girl at the strip club with Mauricio earlier. I was like, oh, so I technically was right. But it was just confusing. They just looked alike to me for some reason. So yeah, that was just confusing. So I, I was right. I predicted the killer. I don't know how. I just saw her and I was like, she's new, right? She's the new hire. So I was like, yeah, it has to be her. So yeah, but yeah. Anybody else confused Doris and Patricia? Did anybody else have that mistake like me? Then we meet Magda. Interesting name. She is the uh, girlfriend of Carlo. And she looks a lot like Meg Tilly in Psycho 2. Meg Tilly in her youth. And, you know, call me a pig if you want, but she has the best hits in this movie. So then Mario, he goes and retrieves a photo for the killer and then gets killed right away after giving it to the killer. So, and, But what's interesting, though, is that they have him say the names of all these people in the photo, which starts to eliminate suspects. Because let's say he was retrieving the photo for Carlo or Magda. He wouldn't be saying their name to them. Like, here's a picture. Yeah, look, it's... You know, he would be like, it's you. But instead, he's like, yeah, this is a picture of Gisela, so-and-so, so-and-so. Like, so it's like every name he says, that's scratching the name off the list. Like, well, it can't be that person because if that person in the photo is who he's talking to, he would just say, it's this person, this person, you, and this person. You know, so it's like that scene just really scratched a bunch of names off the suspect list. And then I was like, okay, well, who's left? Whose name did he not say? Doris and Patricia. Which, to me, at the time, I thought that was the same person. This is such an older movie thing. Like, it doesn't happen in film today. Where, at least, I don't see it very often today. Uh, but when a woman sees something horrifying, they faint and they put their hand up like, ah, and they, <laughs> they fall to the ground. It's such an old movie thing. Like, especially, like, back in the... 60s 50s older older movies but this girl she sees uh, mario dead and she just goes ah, faints and what was interesting though is when she finds mario dead his pants are pulled down and he's like on his front so his ass is exposed so is the killer raping them like they never say exactly what's being done to these bodies so what's going on here is that is Patricia fucking these people? Like, you impregnated my sister, you assholes, and got her to get an abortion. You forced her to get an abortion, and she got killed. And so now I'm gonna fuck you guys. And I don't know, like what? What is she doing? And then we get this funny scene where, as the one detective's talking to the boss lady, Gisela, the other detective is standing in the back of the room staring at, like, the secretary's crotch. Just staring the entire scene for, like, three minutes straight, not saying a word, not blinking, just staring at her crotch. And then, it, like, hard cuts from that scene to the boss lady, Gisela, butt-ass naked with the new lady, Lucia. Right, yeah, Lu Lucia, and she's she's naked on top of her, and she's like slapping her around. It's so jarring. And so then Gisela leaves, and uh, the new lady's like trying to, she's threatening to blackmail her, like, oh, I'll tell everybody that you're a lesbian or something like that. And after Gisela leaves, the new girl Lucia gets killed very much the same way as everybody. Uh, but I thought this scene kind of had a, had a good misdirection where. 
you hear something moving over there, and then all of a sudden the killer's in the shower curtains behind her and attacks. So that was some good misdirection there. Okay, then Carlo strangles Magda, his girlfriend. Like, I forget what provoked him, but it doesn't, nothing excuses this behavior. He just starts strangling her for a good, like, 20 seconds, and then he's just like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then they're they're good. Like, she forgives him. They're still together throughout the rest of the film. And then the next scene after that, Carlo is threatening to slap his boss. Like, I, I talked about it earlier. Like, he raises his hand. He's about to slap her in the face. You know, Italians love slapping people. It's in all these movies. Anytime you watch an Italian film, especially these giallo films, like, you can always count on somebody getting slapped at some point it's gonna happen take a drink so you get you get some slapping here but he was threatening to slap his boss who's a woman so that's extra wrong <laughs> you don't hit a woman and you don't hit your boss so this guy should have been fired this guy needs to be in jail then we get this scene where mauricio picks up doris off the street and drives her to his house but He's driving like a goddamn maniac, and this was actually kind of impressive. It looked like they just threw a camera in a car and told this guy to go drive through, like, downtown, whatever city this is. Like, pedestrians everywhere. Like, there was some good stunts here. Like, this looked like it was dangerous. And so he drives her all the way to his house, gets her in there, and it starts, like, begging for it. Like, he is begging for sex. Like, please... You gotta have sex with me. He's married, and I guess his wife's not fucking him because um, she's a lesbian. Because we see that she's you know trying to get it on with Lucia, so he's like handing cash out to her, like please, I'll pay you. She's like, I'm not a whore, but then she actually like caves in. I guess she feels sorry. Like she actually starts stripping nude. And one detail I left out is that Mauricio is like this 300 pound overweight guy who looks disgusting like he strips down to his whitey tidies and i about threw up and the fact that she actually like stripped new for him and didn't take his money like what the what is going on here like i couldn't believe it so yeah she actually gets naked and then he gets on top of her and i guess premature ejaculates like he jizzes really early uh i thought he just couldn't get it up he never said like oh i'm sorry i came already he just said, you know, oh, this happens every time. I just, I can't do it. So I thought he just couldn't get a hard on, but I guess he jizzed early, like right as soon as he got on top of her, and then he didn't even have his dick out yet. <laughs> so, so this guy premature ejaculates, and she leaves, and then he gets killed, but not before whipping out a blow-up doll that's like half inflated, and he's just walking around his house trying to blow it back up, <laughs> then he gets killed. Oh, and another little detail that was funny about that scene is that after he comes early, he starts crying on top of her and yelling, Mommy! Mommy! I do like that Magda calls the cops during this one scene where she hears something, someone at the door and she thinks it might be the killer because there's just mysterious knocking but no one's talking. So she goes to the phone, calls the cops right away. And I thought that was really smart because you don't usually see that. And But then it ends up being the false alarm. It was Carlo at the door. He has something in his mouth, blah, blah, blah. But I, I like that she called the cops right away. So then we get this whole scenario where Gisela is being blackmailed by Stefano. We find that out later on. And so Carlo goes there to take pictures of this meeting because he found out about it through his girlfriend Magda who was eavesdropping on this phone conversation between Gisela and Stefano. But then the killer knows about this meeting also somehow. I guess this person was just following them. Uh, so the killer gets there, kills Gisela, but there's no running water this time, so that rule was broken. You know, every other kill before and after had running water going on. This one did not, that I'm aware of. But then the cops are there also. Like, Instantly, as soon as the killer attacks, the cops were like already there 
How did the cops know this meeting was taking place? I must have missed something. But then Carlo, after he takes the picture of Stefano and the killer, he goes around the corner, gets hit by the killer, driving the car. He gets injured, sent to the hospital. Then he sends his girlfriend Magda to go get the film to develop it that he left in a trash can. But before she can leave the apartment, she has to strip naked one more time. Like, (laughs) as if this movie didn't already have enough nudity. She has to get naked before leaving her apartment for some reason. I thought it was funny how the killer we see is just driving their car around with the helmet on. Like, why would you be wearing a biker helmet on when you're driving a car? So then we get the revelation that Stefano and Doris are trying to blackmail Gisela. They're the ones that set up that meeting. And then after this is revealed, the killer shows up at their place and kills both of them and strips them both naked after they're killed because everybody's got to be naked. And then Carlo shows up and finds Magda there unconscious. So the killer knocked her out at the other location and dragged her all the way to this location to frame her. Like the killer put her on a bed unconscious with a bloody knife in her hand. Why is Patricia trying to frame Magda of all people? Like, I don't think she was responsible. I mean, none of these people are really responsible for what happened to her sister. It's Carlo and the doctor more than anybody. And, you know, she doesn't even get to kill Carlo. So justice wasn't really served. Like, Carlo needed to die by the end of this film. Um, But yeah, like, why is she trying to frame Magda? That was one question I had. So then Carlo and Magda, they go to the killer's house somehow... I think he knew who it was. He put it all together, so he drove to the killer's house. But for some reason, he went there unarmed. No knife, no gun, nothing. Uh, Goes inside, gets knocked on the ground. The killer goes out to the car and starts strangling his girlfriend. But, you know, she's used to that at this point (laughs) because of her boyfriend. Um, But what was funny is, like, she's being strangled on the outside of the car. And right before he went inside, he clearly told her, stay inside the car. So what? In the 10 seconds between him going inside the house and getting knocked out, she quickly disobeyed his order and just got outside the car and got strangled. Like, lady, he told you to stay inside the car. If you would have did that and locked the door, you wouldn't be getting strangled right now. But why is she being strangled? Like, why does the killer not have a weapon all of a sudden? I mean, I know she planted the knife at the other location to frame Magda, but you're telling me she didn't have another weapon on her? Like... She, that's not her M.O. She's not going around strangling people. She's stabbing people. So why is she trying to strangle Magda all of a sudden? So then we get this kind of brief chase around this building. And, you know, the killer gets knocked down the stairs and killed. And he takes the helmet off. Very Scooby-Doo. Like, who is it? And it's Patricia, the sister of Evelyn, the girl in the opening who had the abortion and got killed. And so, yeah, she was just getting revenge. You know, her sister got pregnant and she had to go get an abortion and she got killed because of the abortion. So she's trying to kill, she killed the doctor. Then she was going to kill Carlo last, she says. She was like, I'm going to kill you last, Carlo. And then this movie ends with Carlo jokingly strangling Magda. So this woman has just been through a lot and she was just almost strangled to death by... Patricia, the night before, like, I don't know, this is like the next day, right? I can only assume, but, like, too soon. That's too soon for a prank like that. (laughs) He's just just trying to strangle his girlfriend after all of this. Really? And then right after that, you know, she says something like, you know, oh, you you don't have to worry about getting me pregnant. I'm on the pill. And then he's like, well, you know, I'm not going to take that risk anyway, so... He, like, flips her over, and he's about to, like, butt fuck her, and she's like, no, no, stop. And then he's like, oh, I'm just joking. Like, he's, like, joking with her again and again. He's constantly fucking with her, and that's how the movie ends. Like, (laughs) he's trying to strangle her, and then he's trying to butt fuck her. (laughs) Then, credits. So, that is the end of Strip Nude for Your Killer. What are your thoughts on this crazy, sleazy giallo? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you like what you've seen here, you can hit this like button and become a subscriber today just by clicking on my cartoon face in about five seconds. And remember, it's all opinion. You don't need to get butthurt about it. <laughs>